Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 9, Tables of Equivalent Ratios. So, example one says, to make a paper mache, the art teacher mixes water and flour. For every two cups of water, so the key word here is for every. That tells us that we have a ratio. And what we're comparing is two cups of water. She needs to mix in three cups of flour. Okay, three cups of flour. So cups of water to cups of flour. So find the equivalent ratios for the ratio relationship. Two cups of water to, there's our key word, that's our colon, three cups of flour. So two cups of water will require three cups of flour to make the proper paper mache ratio mixture. If I put that in a ratio, since I put that ratio symbol here, I could actually write it over here as two to three. It says represent the equivalent ratios in the table below. Equivalent ratios mean that a, all the ratios have the same reduced value. So if I double two, two times two is four, three times two is six, four to six is equivalent to two to three when I reduce it, because if I divide four by two and six by two, I get two and three. Four divided by two is two, six divided by two is three. So we know also that repeated addition is multiplication. So if I keep adding two, two plus two is four, plus two is six, plus two is eight, plus two is 10, and I add three, three plus three is six, plus three is nine, plus three is 12, plus three is 15, then I have all these ratios that should be equivalent. And when I take six divided by three, I get two. Nine divided by three is three. Eight divided by four is two. 12 divided by four is three. 10 divided by five is two. And 15 divided by five is three. So this proves that these are all equivalent ratios when I reduce the ratio in the table down to its lowest value which are all equivalent. Example two, Xavier has a new job designing websites. He is paid at a rate of $700 for every three pages of web content. Total pages built, three. Total money earned, $700. So that's the given, so I started the table already. Okay, so. I need to continue on. It says create a ratio table to show the total amount of money Xavier Xavier earned in a ratio to the number of pages that he built. So I'm going to take it to that same level and we're going to take three plus three plus three plus three. All the multiples of three. And all the multiples of 700. 700 plus 700, 1,400. 2,100, seven times four is 28 with two zeros, seven times five is 35 with two zeros. Okay, seven times six is 42 with two zeros, seven times seven is 49 with two zeros, and seven times eight is 56 with two zeros. So all I did was add 7, add 700, add 700, add 700 as well. We could do it that way. Add 3, add 3, add 3, add 3. Xavier is saving to purchase a used car that costs $4,200. How many web pages will he need to build before he can pay for the car? So I look over here, and luckily enough, the exact value is in the table. So I would say he will need to build 18 web pages to pay $4,200 for the car. Okay, next example. Exercise one, spraying plants with cornmeal juice is a natural way to prevent fungal growth on plants. It is made by soaking cornmeal in water. 
using two cups of cornmeal for every, there's the key word right there, for every, that's a ratio, nine gallons of water. Two cups of cornmeal, nine gallons of water. Complete the ratio table to answer the questions that follow. So this is just another example. We're going to repeated addition or multiply two, four, six, eight, ten. 9, 18, 27, 36, 45. Okay. How many cups of cornmeal should be added to 45 gallons of water? That answer is right here. And you should say 10 cups of cornmeal should be added to 45 gallons of water. B says, Paul has only eight cups of cornmeal. How many gallons of water should be added if he wants to make as much cornmeal juice as he can? So now we want to look for cups of cornmeal, eight, which is right here, and then answer the question. He should add 36 gallons of water to the eight cups of cornmeal. Okay, C, what can you say about the value of the ratios in the table? What they're saying here is we want to reduce them as far as possible. Two will not go into nine. Two is even, nine is odd, two is prime, so I can't go any lower. So this is a ratio of two to nine. If I divide 4 by 2, I get 2. If I divide 18 by 2, I get 9. Divide 6 by 3, I get 2. 27 divided by 3 is 9. 8 divided by 2, I'm sorry, 8 divided by 4 is 2. I almost said that backwards. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 36 divided by 4 is 9. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 45 divided by 5 is 9. So we're getting 2 to 9 every time. And what can you say about the value of the ratios in the table? The values of the ratios are equivalent. Because they're all 2 to 9. Okay, so there's that question. Exercise two. Try this on your own. Pause the video if you want to give this a shot and then come back and see how you did. Okay, so here James is setting up a fish tank. He's buying a breed of goldfish that typically grows to be 12 inches long. So he's buying small goldfish that are going to grow and eventually they will be one foot long or 12 inches long. It is recommended that there be one gallon of water for every inch. What is the recommended ratio of the gallons? So we don't want to buy a fish that's one inch long and say, I only need one gallon because one gallon for every inch of fish, that fish grows and now it's two inches long and you need two gallons, but you only have one. That fish is not going to be healthy because it's not getting enough oxygen. So number of fish one we want to think about the future and prepare for having that fish as long as possible so that it grows to be full grown which is 12 inches so if you have a fish you have even though it's one inch when you buy it you have to consider that it will eventually be 12 inches long and so for every inch of fish you're going to need one gallon of water so one fish full grown would need 12 gallons of water. And now we just duplicate what we've done before. 1 times 2, 1 times 3, 1 times 4, 1 times 5. 12 times 2, 12 times 3, 
12 times 4, 12 times 5. Okay, so there's our table. What size tank in gallons is needed for James to have five full-grown goldfish? So it is right here, and it will be he needs a 60-gallon tank to allow for five fish. Okay, how many full-grown goldfish can go into a 40-gallon tank? Okay, so here's the gallons here. Here is 36, here is 48, so 40 is going to be in between 36 and 40. A 36-gallon tank would only sustain three fish. I need 48 gallons of water for four fish. So 40 is less than 48, so four fish cannot go into a 40-gallon tank. They won't be healthy. I need 48 gallons of water. So I need to go back and go to less than, so it's still safe for the fish. So I need, so the answer is three full-grown fish can go into a 40 gallon tank. C. What can you say about the values of the ratios in the table? Okay, so let me just erase this explanation over here and we're going to reduce all of these. One is prime, I can't reduce less than one, so that is my ratio I'm looking for. Two divided by two is one, 24 divided by two is 12, three divided by three, 36 divided by three. Four divided by four, 48 divided by four, five divided by five is one, and 60 divided by five is 12. Okay. So what can you say about the values of the ratios in the table? They are all equivalent. I won't take the time to write that, but you would say the value of the ratios in the table are equivalent. Okay, lesson summary. A ratio table is a table of pairs of numbers that form equivalent ratios. That is the end of lesson nine. Go do your problem set.